We are live. Start, please. We are live. We can start, please. Madam Principal, it should be paid or it should have started. Ma'am, unmute, unmute, unmute. Ma'am, unmute. Hello. Uh, yeah, Madam, can we start or? Our chief guest is coming within a few minutes. I have okay. spoken to his PA. Okay. okay, so let us wait for two, three minutes. Then we'll okay. see. Only two. She's coming. We are just waiting. You are unmuted. Unmuted, sir. We are just waiting for our chief guest, Honorable Vice Chancellor. She is all about to come. Uh, for one or two minutes, we are waiting. Sitting in the webinar? One 
वेटिंग लिस्ट में है कोई डॉक्टर नीलिमा गुप्ता प्रोफेसर नीलिमा गुप्ता प्लीज चेक करो प्लीज हाँ वाइस चांसलर हमारे चीफ गेस्ट प्लीज कॉल Yes, the uh, VC ma'am joined. She's here. Should we start? Huh? We can welcome our Vice Chancellor, ma'am. We can welcome our Chief Honorable Vice Chancellor. She is not visible to me. Has she joined? Saba. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, the notification came. But I okay. can't see. Okay, okay. Because uh, even the PA is saying she's there. She's joining. She's here. She's here. She's here. Yeah. Okay. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, okay. Now let's begin. Ha, ah, sure. Welcome you, ma'am. Good Thank evening, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. A very good evening to all the dignitaries, and good morning to the speakers. and warm greetings to everyone i am dr sabai yunus assistant professor department of sociology mahila mahavidyalaya pg college kanpur and the organizing secretary of this event i heartily welcome you all on this platform of international web conference organized by the department of english in collaboration with department of sociology of mahila mahavidyalaya kanpur as a part of our culture we always start our programs by praying goddess saraswati who is hindu goddess of knowledge music art wisdom and learning i request dr dipali to please play the saraswati vandana You have to put the computer sound on. Yes, sir. Yeah, namaste, our participants. Namaste. तुषार हार धवला शुभ्र वस्त्रता या वीणा खंड मंडित करा शुभ्र वस्त्रता चित शंकर प्रवृति भी देव ही सदा वंदिता सामा पात सरस्वती भगवती शेष जाटिया पहाशेष जाटिया पहा Thank you very much. After this inflating ambience pervading all over by offering prayers to Goddess Saraswati, myself, Dr. Nishi Singh, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Mahila Mahavidyalaya PG College, Kanpur, and host of this event, heartily welcomes you all on this platform of international web conference. organized by the department of english in collaboration with department of sociology of mahila mahavidyalaya pg college kanpur now i most humbly request dr b r agrawal ma'am 
principal and head of the department english and convener of this e conference to please deliver her welcome address to all the eminent personalities joining us on this platform over to madam thank you nishi good evening everyone most respected chief guest the dynamic administrator a scientist with dedicated research perspective and committed to upgrade the qualitative ranking of the university honorable vice chancellor cgm university professor neelma gupta ji mrs ananta saru esteemed member board of management a soft spoken philanthropist and a great career and the inheritor of the legacy of the doyen of education dr viren saru our learned keynote speaker professor maria arlin ji almita a clinical psychologist a medical doctor and an independent researcher sao paulo university brazil our guest special speaker professor betty mcdonald professor scholar and researcher with a prolific teaching career department of professional development university of trinidad and tobago caribbean our guest speaker a bright scholar and an inspired teacher professor sasapan mahmood department of business administration kasem bondit university bangkok with doctoral research on entire india economic cooperation our enlightened resource person and guest speaker professor indu goyal associate professor and head department of english alabad degree college pragraj keenly interested in independent study of scriptures ancient classics and epics all distinguished principals learned faculty members from the university and all friends from different colleges affiliated to the csgm university and other distant universities of the country from north to south and east to west all enthusiastic participants i welcome you all from the depth of my heart in this international webinar on covid-19 a global assessment of the societal pressures and mental resilience in life and literature organized by the department of english and sociology i feel greatly honored in welcoming our chief guest our honorable vice chancellor who so kindly accepted our invitation and graced the occasion with her motivating presence sparing a few of her precious moments from her busy schedule of life i extend a very warm welcome to you madam for your outstanding support to such academic exercises it's my privilege to welcome mrs ananta saru a dynamic member of the board of management whose keen interest in academic events and development activities of the college really inspires us and strengthens our resolve to move ahead with more enthusiasm i am overwhelmed with joy to welcome our keynote speaker professor Ma maria alin Al ji almida with a prolific career as a clinical psychologist independent researcher and a medical doctor whose presence and enlightening address will throw new lights on the paradigms of covid-19 and its impact on life and literature especially the role of poetry we we extend a hearty welcome to you madam i welcome from the depth of my heart our special speaker uh, professor betty mcdonald for her kind consent to be our special speaker and wish her that her thoughtful address will add new dimensions to the meaning and purpose of the webinar my very warm welcome to our guest speaker professor tasapun mahmood for his cordial presence as our guest speaker and hope his scholarly discourse on new normal digital human resource management will offer new insights into the management of this global global pandemic and enable us to learn how to come out of this unprecedented crisis i am pleased to express my deep gratitude and extend a special welcome to our special speaker professor indu goyal and hope we will definitely benefit from her comprehensive lecture 
on the role of literature in strengthening mental resilience of men against the odds and challenges of life and society. Once again, I welcome all the distinguished guests, eminent speakers, fellow principals, and teaching fraternity, research scholars, and students from the deep recess of my heart. I sincerely hope that through this webinar, we will be able to spread the message approved by our culture, scriptures, and great literary works that by strengthening our mental resilience, positive <clears throat> attitude, and optimistic perspective, we can not only survive these hard times and societal pressures of COVID-19, but also can overcome and extricate uh, successfully from these pressures and challenges as advised by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, Udharet Atmanam Atmanat. A man has to be lift himself up. A man is his own best friend as also his enemy. Our strong emotional quotient as well as spiritual quotient constitutes our mental resilience, which our youth and especially students have to be taught to strengthen in the backdrop of COVID-19 as survival, not surrender, is the message given by our culture and our literature. Once again, with warm regards and uh, utmost welcome from my heart, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your kind and heartwarming welcome words for all present on this platform. Now I take this opportunity to introduce briefly the theme of today's International Web Conference on COVID-19, a global assessment of the societal pressures and mental resilience in life and literature. With the disruptive effects of COVID-19, human civilization is passing through the most critical juncture of this millennium, while its existence is being challenged by the emergence of this catastrophic pandemic encroaching new territories all over the world at PDHC. A wide fragment of the world's population is primarily restricted to their homes, owing to nationwide lockdowns and home confinement strategies implemented in the majority of the COVID-19 hit countries after China to prevent further disease transmission. This unpredictable, fast-spreading infectious disease has been causing universal despair, anxiety, and distress, all of which are natural psychological responses to the randomly changing conditions of the world. As a consequence to this, rapidly expanding mass hysteria and panic regarding COVID-19 may beget enduring psychological problems in public from all the socio-economic domains which could potentially be even more detrimental in the long run than the virus itself. Therefore, in this background, it is imperative for us to focus on the issues like societal pressures and mental resilience in life and literature to evaluate the relevant psychosocial consequences and literary impact of COVID-19 in various strata of modern society. Mental resilience that refers to the positive adaptation to adversity teaches us how we can draw on the remarkable powers of strength and cooperation that we also fortunately possess as humans and make us realize that greatest assets of mankind are health, peace, love, solidarity, ingenuity, and knowledge. Literature in responding to epidemics celebrates the enduring range of human responses, the gamut of feelings that rage against the onslaught of diseases and death. First and most obviously, literary texts have represented suffering populations since ancient times. We have now seen, as a result of the pandemic, a heightened interest in Daniel Defoe's Journal of the Plague, Air, Mary Shelley's Last Man, Albert Camus, The Plague, and numerous eco-disaster fictional works from Margaret Edward, Stephen King, Jim Chris, Cormac, and McCarthy, among others. Writers over centuries have repeatedly explored it in, in prose and verse, underlining not just its terrifying power, but also the resilience of human mind in confronting it. Even a number of movies, Indian and Western, portray and teach us the need of optimistic perspective in times of crisis. Great freedom fighters, legendary figures from Ramayana and Mahabharata, creative writers like Milton, Surda, Helen Keller, 
Charles Dickens, Rudyard Kipling, and J.M. Finch, all manifested mental resilience in their lives. This international webinar aims to have deliberations on various issues related to the societal pressures and mental resilience in life and literature by the resource persons of international reputation to enlighten us with their insightful interaction, focusing on ways of coping, surviving, and learning lessons that may enable us to create our own strategies for resilience. It is also an effort to contemplate on the ways to sort out the possible solutions and substantial steps to motivate the youth of the day and particularly the students to achieve for themselves mental resilience and ethical strength to overcome this global pandemic. Thank you. And now I would request Dr. Sangeeta Satani Ma'am, Associate Professor and Head of the Department Economics to please introduce the Chief Guest of the occasion, Professor Neelima Gupta Ma'am, Vice Chancellor, CSJM University, Khan. Over Thank to you. Dr. Sangeeta Ma'am. Thank you, Nishi. Good evening, one and all. The task of introducing our Chief Guest, Professor Neelima Gupta Ji, is a great privilege which is given to me. I know this is difficult, but the thought that she is a woman of virtue and simplicity, I feel elated to introduce her to everyone. If one takes a closer look at the alchemy of the achieving person, two distinct virtues which pop up besides perseverance and hard work are, are pioneering spirit and willingness. RVC ma'am is the living idiom of this. She is presently serving as Vice Chancellor of Chhatrapati Shaoji Maharaj University, Kanpur, since 2018. This university has reached to new heights in her able guidance. She is also giving her service at many other administrative positions in different organizations. She is President of India nominee as member in Executive Council of Central University of Tamil Nadu, UGC nominee in Board of Governors at Gautam, Gautam Buddha University, Greater Noida, member higher education in World Mission at United Kingdom and visiting scientist at Poland. Other than being an excellent administrator, ma'am is a researcher by her. She has an experience of 44 years of research and teaching. She was awarded the grant of rupees 68 lakh for the Center of Excellence by the government of UP for developing a high-tech lab. The laboratory is one of the best of the country. It has foreign research collaborations with Poland, Egypt, and Czech Republic. She has visited five continents of the world for her research work. She is principal investigator of 12 international and national research proje projects of worth more than rupees 1.8 crore crores funded by UGC, DST, AICTE, Ministry of Environment and Forest, UPCAR. She has also guided doctoral and postdoctoral fellows. Some of them are holding honorable positions of vice chancellors, directors, scientists, and faculty of different organizations. She has adjudicated more than 130 PhD thesis in India and abroad. Ma'am has published about eight books and 190 research papers in different national and international acclaimed journals. She has attended 214 conferences and organized many international and national conferences. Not only this, she is the editorial member of peer reviewer of several national and international journals of India and abroad. She is Vice President of Geological Society of India and is Executive Member of various scientific societies. She is also an expert in NAC, UGC, Public Service Commission and Selection Committees of National and International Universities. She has backed many awards and honors. The list is long, such as such of uh, which includes Ek Janki Amal National Award, Saraswati Samman, Vigyan Ratna, Dr. Shah Abidi, Vishisht Krishi Vagyanik Award, University Gold Medal in 1977, ZSI Gold Medal, Senior Scientist Award, Lifetime Achievement Recognition, 
Dr. B. N. Singh Memorial Oration Award, Eminent Parasitologist of Uttar Pradesh, Millennium Women Scientist Award, Best Orator Gold Medal, Women of the Year Award, and so on. We feel tremendously proud to have such a prestigious and scholarly persona as our chief guest and patron of today's international webinar. Madam is the head of our family. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us today to motivate and give strength to us. Now, I would request Professor Gupta ji to enlighten the webinar with the presence. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Ananta Swaroop, who is here on behalf of the Managing Committee of uh, Mahila Mahavidyalaya Kanpur, Professor Arlene, who is a clinical psychologist, and she's here to deliver her illustrious talk on the topic of the webinar, Professor Betty McDonald, who is from Trinidad and Tobacco, who is also a special speaker for the conference, Professor Mehmod, who is from Bangkok, another speaker for the webinar, Dr. Indu Goyal, who is from Allahabad Degree College, Prayagraj, Dr. Baby Rani Agrawal, who took this venture to organize this international web conference. The other delegates of this webinar who are present here and all the audience who is here to attend this international web conference on COVID-19, a global assessment of the societal pressures and mental resilience in life and literature. First of all, I would like to congratulate and compliment Mahila Mahavidyale, an affiliated college of Chhatrapati Shahuji Maharaj University for taking this initiative to organize this international web conference. I know that the principal works hard and uh, in my tenure here, I have seen her organizing great events. And I would say that this is another such event which she has organized in bringing people from far and wide to be tagged up with this conference. The title of this very conference appears to be a little different. In fact, I've been attending very many conferences. Uh, these days, they talk either about COVID-19 itself, the virus. They talk about the impacts of the virus on the society. They talk about the impact of this situation on the education, they talk about the impact of the virus on the economy. But this uh, title, when I went uh, through it, it appears to be a little different in the sense that it talks about societal pressures and mental resilience in life and literature. So there are a few words. I mean, I see that people of uh, English and psychology and medical sciences, they are all here and they must be masters in their fields. But if we talk about the societal pressures, then societal pressures today, and I would like to talk about societal pressures uh, with reference to the present day situation. And all of us know that uh, the present day situation is COVID-19. You talk about anything and COVID-19 comes in front. You talk about education, COVID-19 is in front. If you go uh, further towards education, it means that uh, if you talk about the societal pressure, then it may be the students, it may be the guardians, it may be the teachers, it may be the college or the university administration, they're all under pressure. So this is one type of pressure which the society is facing right now. We, I, I talked about this type of pressure because I think most of us today here are uh, connected with uh, the Department of Education in one way or the other. Now, if we move on and we try to talk about other pressures in the society, so today we have, if we talk about the doctor, say the doctor who is taking care of the patients, so these doctors, they are also under a great pressure because on one hand, they have the duty, they have to nurture, they have to care the patients. And the other, on, on the other hand, uh, hand, they have their own uh, health, they have their own family. And between these two, the doctor, he's, he's trying to attend to the patients. On the other hand, we see that many of the doctors, after they're attending the patients, they are put into quarantine. Our guest house, the international guest house, that is also quarantine for the doctors. So they are serving and then they are under quarantine and then they again go back. So this is another type of pressure which the doctors are facing. Another pressure being faced by the society 
is the pressure which is being uh, faced by uh, uh, the the police now they are also on the road they have to take care that all the norms as laid down by the government of india or the state government right now with respect to covid 19 they are being followed so they are on their toes always and again they are under stress now let us talk about the businessman the businessman who had to be locked down for this long period is very very much worried how to make his livelihood and it is for this reason that although today the situation is not congenial we have to go in for the uh, unlock down period gradually we are unlocking down the entire society but this also is the pressure so these are the different types of pressures with which we are stressed right now and if we just try to think about uh, these pressures it may be any of these pressures some of us might be feeling more than one type of this pressure pressure so under these pressures uh, we we start thinking that how can we revive back into our uh, normal uh, situation because uh, these conditions they cause mental stress so now when we are having mental stress then how what would be the period of resilience that is how can we come back from this stress so that we become normal so this is i am commonly whenever i am deliberating on these issues i am talking about this period as a covid era i talk about the pre covid era and the post covid era so we have these three eras now uh, which we talk about like we used to say bc and ad earlier now i think we are going to have a different type of classification as a pre covid era the covid era and the post covid era so now let us forget about the pre covid era that becomes history but we are facing present is the covid era and the future is a post covid era and we have to make meet out these challenges so on one hand whereas we'll be discussing about these mental stresses and the resilience how we are uh, going to come back to our normal situation but i would suggest that we should take this is a challenge today which we are all facing it is a big challenge how to meet up with all these stresses but i must say that we should take all these challenges yeah. as an opportunity because this is life i think all of us uh, in one time or the other we face some type of crisis in our lives so this also is a type of crisis and we have to live through it we have to conquer it and we have to come out of it so this is the actual situation so if i just try to divide this uh, entire phenomena which is going on right now i would say the first thing is survival that is we have to cope up with our stress and we have to survive in this period so that we become citizens or in future will be able to say that it is we who are the survivors we are the lucky pe people who sailed through this boat and we we have been able to overcome this pandemic the ill effects of this pandemic that is covid-19 so the first stage would be survival we have to show the society that we are capable of surviving under these adverse circumstances now i think we have had uh, very many web webinars on how we can protect ourselves how we can improve our immunity how we have to adopt social distancing how we have to wear the mask all the time so all these things are there and it is by these means only and as per the guidelines given by the government of india and the state government from time to time that we have to survive so this would be the first aspect that we have to survive through this period once we are surviving through this period is that uh, what you were saying in uh, certain terms in as per your topic that is mental resilience i would say revival that is first stage is the survival stage and the second one is the revival stage that is after we have survived zinda rehna hi kafi nahi hai जिंदा जो हम हमें ये ज्ञात हो जाए कि हम जिंदा हैं उसके बाद जिंदा होने के साथ साथ हमें वी हैव टू अर्न अवर लाइवलीहुड आल्सो हमें सरवाइव करने के साथ साथ हमें रिवाइव करना है कि जो हमारी सिचुएशन पहले थी हमें उसी सिचुएशन पर आना है और इसके साथ ही मेरा ये भी मानना है कि रिवाइव करने के साथ साथ हर जो हमें तकलीफ आती है उससे हम लोग कुछ ना कुछ सीखते हैं और मुझे लगता है आप सभी मानेंगे कि हमने कुछ ना कुछ इस कोविड 19 से जरूर सीखा है कोविड 19 ने हमें बहुत कुछ सिखा दिया है क्या सिखा दिया इसने हमें ये सिखा दिया कि हमारी हेल्थ हमारे लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इसने हमें ये सिखा दिया कि हमें हेल्थ एंड हाइजीन के ऊपर ध्यान देना है इसने ये हमें सिखा दिया कि सैनिटाइजेशन की क्या जरूरत है इसने हमें ये सिखा दिया है कि कोई भी इस तरह की हेल्थ अगर हमारे पर मुसीबत आती है हमें अपने हेल्थ सिस्टम को बहुत स्ट्रांग रखना है इसने ये भी सिखा दिया कि हमें अपनी कंट्री को अपनी इकोनॉमी के बारे में फ्यूचर के बारे में भी हमें सोचना है इसने ये भी सिखा दिया कि हमें अपनी कंट्री के लिए अपना हेल्थ सिस्टम को बहुत स्ट्रांग रखना है 
बहुत कुछ इसने सिखाया तो जब हम सरवाइव भी कर गए और सरवाइव करने के बाद हम रिवाइव भी कर गए तो मैं समझती हूँ कि जब हम कोविड नाइन्टीन से निकल के आएंगे वी विल अचीव एक्सीलेंस आई feel that these are the three stages which we are going uh, through that is survival revival and excellence so let me just hum log mujhe lagta hai agar hum is topic ko dekhein to man mein thoda sa ek bojh sa lagta hai ki agar hamare paas to charon taraf se mental pressure hain aur itne mental pressure se hum kaise wapas aayenge i think you are going to discuss this issue in this webinar but i would say that hum wapas hi nahi aana hai लेकिन हम इसको इससे कुछ सीख कर हमें बाहर निकलना है वी हैव टू बिकम बेटर सिटीजन आफ्टर वी कम आउट ऑफ कोविड नाइनटीन सो आई कॉम्प्लीमेंट द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ दिस कॉलेज द मैनेजिंग कमिटी ऑफ दिस कॉलेज द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी ऑफ दिस वेबिनार आई फील प्राउड टू से that one of our affiliating colleges that is mahila mahavidyalaya has taken this venture to organize this uh, webinar i wish you all the best and i do hope that the speakers who, is, who are going to deliver their wonderful talks talking about psychology on one hand talking about life on the other hand talking about literature on the other hand i am sure that we are all going to be benefited so once again i thank you very much wish you all the best wish you success in your endeavor and let us come out as better citizens thank you Thank you very much, ma'am, for your wonderful and insightful deliberations on the topic. Now, may I invite Dr. Neeta Mishra, ma'am, Associate Professor, Department of Psychology, for introducing our special guest of the occasion, Mrs. Ananta Swaroop, the member of Board of Management, Mah Mahila Mahavidyalaya, Kanpur. Dr. Thank Neeta you, Mishra, ma'am. Okay. okay. Thank you, Nishi. A very good evening to all. I am very much pleased to present. a brief introduction of shrimati ananta swaroop member board of management mahila mahavidyalay kidwai nagar kanpur ma'am holds llb degree from campus law center delhi university and did history honors from the prestigious st stephen's college delhi she has been a meritorious student throughout ma'am your uh, dedication towards education inspires us to perform better and give the institution a sound footing ma'am you have always motivated us and given us full support whenever needed in all the academic and non academic activities of the college we are heartily thankful to you ma'am for gracing the occasion with your presence a very warm welcome to you ma'am in this international webinar now i take this opportunity to invite you to address the august gathering with your <coughs> scholarly words over to ananta swaroop ma'am please proceed thank you thank you so much a very good evening to you all i am very pleased today that the department of english in collaboration with the department of sociology mahila mahavidyalaya is organizing this international web conference so a very good evening to respected vice chancellor ma'am our uh college principal dr bb rani agarwal esteemed international speakers uh, mrs maria arlin mrs betty mcdonald mr mahmood dr indu goel a very welcome to you all the organizing committee and the delegates present today a very good evening to you all once again i am pleased to be here present today on behalf of uh, representing mahila mahavidyalaya college kanpur in organizing this international web conference on covid-19 a global assessment of the societal pressures and mental resilience in life and literature i would take this opportunity to congratulate the organizers that in these pandemic times also we can overcome it with this sort of a digital and e-learning mode that we now can aspire to go beyond our borders and incorporate international experts within us to speak with us and give insight on this sort of a problem so that our very own students can listen to views from across across the seas the resource persons of these of such international repute who are going who are here with us today and who are going to enlighten us with their deep insight with ways on how to focus and adjust and learn and survive through lessons that may enable us to create our own strategies for resilience i appreciate and acknowledge the gracious presence of 
the honorable vice chancellor of csjm university kanpur who has always supported such academic ventures my best wishes are with this conference so that it would be fruitful and maps the ways to sort out the possible solutions and substantial steps to motivate the society at large especially students and youth to achieve for themselves mental resilience ethical strength to overcome this global pandemic and even not only this pandemic the pressures that come with the pandemic and being in society as such in these trying times i acknowledge my sincere gratitude to the vice chancellor and the enlightened speakers on behalf of the management committee of mahila mahavidyalay kanpur for this academic and intellectual venture at a crucial time when we are all passing through the most crucial and critical juncture of this millennium by far we are in trying and testing times than any other previously felt or felt and experienced by mankind but we will overcome it and as ma'am has said we will survive and come out with excellence and emerge victorious i thank all the organizers for inviting me to be a part of this online academic exercise and wish them all the very best these are definitely going to be very enriching and enlightening lectures today which will benefit us all and i really look forward to it thank you so much very very thank you ma'am for sharing your precious time with all of us and enlightening us with your wonderful work now i would request dr saba yunus assistant professor department of sociology and organizing secretary of this event to please introduce our keynote speaker and set pace to this webinar thank you dr nishi our esteemed keynote speaker professor maria arlene de almeida murera is a lawyer medical doctor master and phd in clinical psychology her post graduation is in conflict resolution and therapy of couple and family she is also an mba in environment management professionally she is an independent researcher and a judicial expert but by heart she is a politics today she is going to deliver her speech on the scenario covid-19 and the role of poetry the mental health and literature i request professor alin to please give her valuable views on this very topic first word about and stresses it is a known disease and our behavior reaction includes recurrent thought related to death and i the loss of our beloved friends and relatives and panic about the pandemic those thought affect the sleep cause appetite disorders <coughs> and increase the incidence of interpersonal conflicts and the violence the social isolation make us to think about some fears like to be sick to die to be socially excluded to be apart from the love of the ones to lose the job and live hood to be with and transmit the virus to others it emerges a sensation of lack of control fragility sadness anguish irritability helplessness and those sensations and feelings affect the mental health mental health is the state of well-being the interaction of the dimension physical psychological social and spiritual and when it is affected we lost the perception of the personal work sk skills present in our daily routine in order to contribute to the way of dealing with everyday life situations but there are some strategies 
to restore or preserve the mental health. And those comprehends to recognize the fear because it is real. To remember the overcame critical situations from the past, it helps. To reduce the time of media coverage, to be part of sharing solidarity actions, to avoid social affective loneliness, avoid alcohol, drugs, and tobacco. Some actions are recommended, reading, meditation, listening or playing music, painting, drawing, writing, and if it's working home, pauses are necessary and also a location calm of work, calm and relaxing. So literature, meditation, arts class, and music are some of the options of those strategies. The, the role of the poems in therapy is not new. A lot of researchers wrote about it. According Aristotle, the phenomena catharsis has the finality to bring purification. He used the Greek term to promote the exegesis of the tragedy and the results that were developed with the presentation of the tragic test. In psychoanalysis, the catharsis is a resource in therapy and has four phases in this phenomenon. The first one is identification. The person assimilates an aspect of quality and uses it to make the own transformation. The second one is introjection. It makes the reference to the moment where the person gives passage to subjects or qualities to how him. The third one is projection. is the movement of ideas, expectation, and intents that someone transfers to others. And the fourth one is introspection is a self-examination, a personal mental experiment that comes before the change of the conduct. In my particular clinic, I used to make poetry and give it to the clients after each session. Making poetry has a long story in my life, but its use in therapy began when I was in a familiar therapy specialization and I was being part of a reflecting team behind the mirror. But I am not the first one to think about poetry in therapy. The subject of the poem is what the client brings to the session, adding some metaphors and shared feelings. The poem is given to the client each subsequent session, and it is notorious, the change of perception. In this COVID-19, I used to make poems, and I will share with you what I wrote, one of them that I wrote about the COVID-19 when the pandemic pandemic is over. When the pandemic is over, I will cover my body with the colors of the rainbow to bring you happiness to all morning people. I will take lemons and squeeze them on the bottom of all surfboards with lots of sugar to make the ocean water sweet like a lemonade. I will sing lyrics by Chico Buarque and throw it in powder at Corona, only to see it dancing samba at Copacabana Age, scratching its body until it dies. I will send my deepest wish to the stars. I want that coronavirus dies in agony, 
because I lost my dearest brothers. I will ask to all gods, make end to this global disease. Join me and we may wipe in our bodies this epilogue. When the meteor shower of Halley's Comet came, I sent my wish with it stop this pandemic and it will be our happiness written in the stars. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I would request Dr. Sabah Yunus, ma'am, to please introduce our special speaker of the evening. Over to Dr. Sabah Yunus, ma'am. Our special speaker of this event is Professor Betty McDonald. She is currently working as a head professional development unit at the world-class University of Trinidad and Tobago. I would like to tell you all that I met her at London during the international conference where I was the keynote speaker and she was the presenter. Professor Betty received best research paper award there and I was the one who presented her the certificate of appreciation. So she is a good academician as well as a great researcher. Today, she will deliver her speech on responding to COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I invite Professor Betty to please share her views. Share screen, you need to, yeah, share screen. Ah, is my screen visible now? Yes. Yes, yes. ma'am. Great. Good evening, colleagues. While it is evening time in Delhi, India, it is morning time here in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. Lying geographically in a more easterly direction, Delhi is nine and a half hours ahead of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Both countries are over 14,500 kilometers or close to 9,000 miles apart. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction and special thanks for extending this invitation for me to share my thoughts on responding to our current COVID-19 pandemic. As Dr. Yunus said, we met in uh, 2016 at a conference in London and she was the keynote speaker. I was one of the presenters who was awarded um, best speaker. So we date back from 2016. Uh, at this point, we would like to look at online teaching and learning as an effective coping strategy in responding to COVID-19 pandemic. And this would address the societal pressures and mental resistance in both life and literature. I am indeed happy to be here. And please allow me to thank the organizers of this timely event, all the presenters and well wishers on this auspicious occasion. We are fully aware that the present COVID-19 pandemic has taught us to be much more in touch with basic sanitation issues, mandatory for maintenance of good health and well-being. Ma mask wearing, hand sanitizing, and social distancing have become the order of the day as countries around the world desperately try to protect their populations against the debilitating effects of the deadly coronavirus. As educational institutions, we choose to observe coronavirus protocols of mask wearing, hand sanitizing, 
and the social distancing by effectively interacting with our students, colleagues, and others through online teaching and learning. As in any endeavor to be successful and effective, we must very carefully consider pedagogy, which is the science of teaching and of course learning by extension, technology, the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes, management, the process of dealing with things or interacting with people, and of course, politics, the activities associated with governance. I know you may wish to, I thought you may wish to know a bit about my university and how we have been using online teaching and learning to reach our students. We have about 7,000 students and just around 1,000 employees comprising faculty, corporate staff, and ancillary staff. Our several campuses are scattered across the island of Trinidad, which is the larger island, and Tobago. Here is our signature campus at Tamina in the northeast of Trinidad. And this is another campus situated in the capital city of Port of Spain. The nature of our programs offered are in keeping with the ongoing developmental needs of the country. We have courses in a wide variety of disciplines like animation studies, agriculture, aviation studies, environmental studies, engineering, education, information techno communication technology, criminology, and a host of others. Fashion and design, sports and leisure, and these, and there are many more. Or instructors are those persons teaching at the university. And that's uh, just an example of three persons. This uh, represents me. By regulations, they are required to have minimal qualifications, at least one level above the level at which they are currently teaching. And these instructors work across programs rather than departments thereby encouraging the interdisciplinary favor of training of students and they can operate from several different research campuses that are scattered across the two island states. The nature of our, uh, our major trends and forces that impact online teaching. And you can see some of them listed here, transitional uh, institutional politics, policies, I'm sorry, institutional change, disruptive technologies, new teaching paradigms that are always happening, student learning and assessment, al alternative credentialing and routes to employment and envisioning strategic planning. Prior to COVID-19 and beyond, online teaching and learning flourished on a variety of platforms like edX, Coursera, FutureLearn, Udacity, Udemy, Khan Academy, to mention a few. I have enjoyed and continue to do so a number of massive open online courses focusing on a variety of topics. In keeping with online teaching and learning needs, especially during COVID-19, when many persons were literally locked down, we consider collaboration, communication, critical thinking, 
and create, uh, creativity has been pivotal. I have found that in maximizing online teaching and learning, there are three areas that we need to focus purposely on. Learning outcomes, learning resources, and learning activities. In one of my books entitled, How to Take a Course Fully Online, I have detailed how it is possible to successfully transform your face-to-face -face courses to a fully online course. Basically, learning outcomes speak to learning that enables the learner to produce a specific outcome. Learning outcomes are effective when they are SMART. And SMART, S-M-A-R-T, is an acronym representing specific for S, measurable, M, A, achievable, R, relevant, and T, time limited. By specific, we mean the outcomes must be clear, stated clearly. They must be able to be measured to have an effective assessment. They must be achievable. That is to say, they must not be outside the limitations of that particular time period. They must be relevant to that particular program or discipline or subject or field of study. And of course, they must be time bound or time limited. In other words, they must be achieved within that specific period. This graphic was sourced as shown. The format of a learning outcome is very important. Normally, we recommend at the end of this topic, module, course, you should be able to and you use verbs like identify, draw, analyze, create, these are measurable. With respect to learning resources, there are a host of free resources out there, especially from open educational resources. You may have videos, mini lectures, readings, animations, and simulations. This is one uh, arrangement in which you can use the resources that you have already uploaded to transform it into a fully online course. And this is another of my recent publications, which is a step-by-step -step guide to using uploaded resources for a fully online course. With respect to learning activities, the list is seemingly endless. Your students may be involved in guided activities, case studies, blogging, games, collaborative mind mapping and brainstorming, discussion forums, peer review sessions, developmental notebooks, coursework preparation, reflective journals, quizzes, and the list continues on and on. As we gradually emerge from the onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic, and as one of our speakers already said, we expect to have excellence so that we may have blended learning as an option rather than fully face-to-face -face or fully online. So blended learning, which is a combination of face-to-face -face and fully online and, and online teaching is projected as the uh, future norm. This book on blended learning provides information for taking uh, courses and making a success of the experience. To summarize very quickly, we have considered mask wearing, hand sanitizing, and social distancing by purposely using online courses. In other words, to 
respect mask wearing, hand sanitizing, and social distancing. We have purposely looked at online courses that are designed to focus on appropriate learning outcomes, learning resources, and learning activities. At this stage, I would like to say that you have risen above societal pressures and shown mental resilience by merely having this webinar for a start. So congratulations, and I thank you immensely. The end. Thank you so much, Professor Betty, for your wonderful speech. And we are very much benefited uh, by your guidelines about the online teachings and the innovations in it. I thank you so much. I request Dr. Nishat uh, to please read uh, a question for the speaker, if there's any, in the chat box from the audience. Dr. Nishat. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there is no, no such question in the chat box. Okay. We can proceed with the other. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Our guest speaker of this event is Dr. Tosapan Mahmood. He is currently working as a lecturer at Postgraduate School of Business Administration, Kasim Bundit University, Bangkok. You all will be delighted to know that he has received his PhD degree from our Agra University. And the topic of his thesis was Thai-Indian Economic Cooperation. Today, he is going to deliver his speech on New Normal Digital Human Resource Management. Now I request Dr. Mahmood to please enlighten us with his views. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Soba uh, Yunus. My name is uh, Dr. Kosapon Mahamud. I'm lecturer and research from the Kasemad University in Bangkok. Thank you very much, uh, I feel in chief and the uh, honors for the one participant and the ticket for speaker. I will to say I'm um, I got master degree from Aligarh Muslim University in the 2001, and I got PhD from Dr. Bimba Ambeka University in Accra in 2011. Because I am the alumni of the India MCOM and the PhD. And now I am lecturer in the Kasemadi University in Bangkok. It's my area: human resource management and the business economy. So today we would like to talk about the touch from the transform the human research leader on the new normal working day. Thailand is the one country, Thailand is the one country about the impact of the COVID-19. And uh, in the situation, the Thai people is the very really difficult to live. And before the new normal coming, everything is the same about the every day for the humanity in the Bangkok and the Bangkok is the, everything is the same. We have the time, the curfew from the 10 p.m. to the 4 morning. We cannot go outside, we stay at the home. So today the human resource is the so important in the organization and the everything chain and the lean value and the sum, the business uh, service, hotel, tourist, everything is the drop. The awesome and the SME, everything is the drop. But uh, today the touch from the human research leader on the new normal working day. So the continue to the impact nearly every country, every country forecast has the increased turn to the virus impact on the driving route. 
This includes how business are the adjusting in fair order to walk from home to the coast to compete unless there are the considerations. Additional as the country and the state begin to lift the restriction and consider reopening business. The business tourists about hotel, about restaurant, about the cup, about the everything. Now the step four, step five to the open, and uh, some economic uh, early start the solo continue. But how can the adjust the organization adjust? But uh, if you are look at the current business, but the less cap and uh, wondering what you can do to the adjust what the, you are being required to the shutdown and doing the so voluntary the simple hope the, to keep the your employee and the uh, every is the possible and uh, the possible thousand of the business the owner to the your the, the company but the how do the employee adjusting the how do employee at the testing is the main same touch employee have to take but the walking the form home can be actually this is the expect return if you have the children the creating the all road due to the parent and the work can be but the some job that difficult the work from home but the, in the human resource that has the how to stay the connect the walking the remote and the zoom and the live and the digital multimedia this is the coming the law in the new dome one day the remote working does not mean have to the disconnect from the less of the them email to the wonderful invention of course but the video chat is then message the collaborative the aspect and uh, equally the lie the communication open the stay attractive to the email but usually have the defending of the T way as uh, defending of the T way have human research defining the new normal. But since the, the COVID 19, the pandemic is the talking, the tell from the human and the, and the human and the public head, the standpoint, along with the cruising massive business disruption. The disruption is coming to the important because the, the somebody, some department in the organization not coming in the office. Did they stay at the home, the business shutting down, the completely in the contract order have the had the request. So the best practice, the human resource is used to the maintaining business continuity is the crisis, but the maintaining business, the continuity during a crisis state with the a uh, response that the including the head and safety lie the social distancing, the protocol to the control and separate of the and the separate of of the virus, the work at home, the policy at the mass. This is the best, the plastic. So this how to is the driving the transformation, how to is driving the transformation, the leg of the new normal before this our big money the company were the cruising of an session transformation to improve the digital recession and the competitive to compete for the high skill and the generation the soon the working the human research the proof the way the transformation the good the company culture this the new culture new character the new style working the telecommuting and the food technology so the tip for the making staff the decision and the team the essential employee who must be available under all the circumstances but the temporary suspension work who can the suspect for the short period the extending suspension work who may be suspect for the extending time indefinitely and if we're getting and setting the terrain for the human resource, the professional is to see that the company touch the pediments that team are the making significant effect to the maintaining business to continue and the driving transformation. The location is the home working remotely on the front line, the reversing extension service. This is the compact seat. This is the compact uh, 
this the model the if the HRT in the in case into the currently stem the into the currently this stem but the location map and the overview employee the learn the mentoring structure the land mentoring structure and the list view the current profile and the employee available for the different team and the zone for the cover and the zone for the cover is called the list. So this is the last, this is the COVID-19. This is the last, the COVID-19, the development step. This is the, for the human research to have the stability at the future trip. The response to the quickly, but the, where the handyman person and setting trend in the many way it is the very important for to have the capacity to maintain continually diving organization diving organization the transformation and optimist staffing by the this the capability now the human resource is different the you know more and improve the company and the company people management the competency in the way that will always the peace and the crisis and with last the all humanity we will the pass to the institution together thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you for such an informative lecture just a reminder to those of you just joining us if you have any questions during the presentation please type them in the chat box of the zoom control panel or on the youtube live session I shall bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for question answers round at the end of the session. Now I would like to request Dr. Parul Avasti, Madam, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to please introduce our next special speaker of the occasion, Dr. Indu Goyal, Ma'am, for her exquisite deliberations on the topic. Over to Dr. Parul Avasti, Ma'am. Dr. Parul Avasti, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Th thank you, Nishi. Good evening to all. It's an honor for me to introduce our last distinguished speaker, Dr. Indu Goel, ma'am. She is an associate professor and head of department English in Allahabad Degree College, Prayagraj, Uttar Pradesh, India. In teaching, she is having more than 24 year experience. It is a matter of great delight for me in informing that she is also a national scholarship holder. Till date, she has presented 40 papers in national as well as in international seminar conferences in various countries like Sri Lanka and Nepal. So far as her publications are concerned, I would tell you that more than 20 papers have been published by her in both national and international journals and anthologies. A book has also been published by her titled Conflict and reconciliation in the novels of Graham Greene. Now, without any delay, I would invite Dr. Indu Goel, ma'am, to please enlighten the August gathering with a special peep of the topic, Rise Like a Phoenix from the Ashes. Thank you, ma'am. Please, over to ma'am. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening to everyone. As uh, has already been said that my topic is today, Rise like a phoenix from the ashes. In Greek mythology, it is believed that a bird phoenix, that when it dies, it reborns from its own ashes. No matter how many times flames burst us, but every time we have the opportunity to come out from our own issues. 
Here, ashes and flames symbolize hardships, pressures, and difficulties. They may defeat you, injure you, abandon you, but they will not, they shall not, cannot destroy. From your own fallen ashes to become brighter and more beautiful than ever before. In fact, we learn more from our failures than success. The word resilience was first used in 1620 and is taken derived from the word, Latin word relilia. That means to recoil, to rebound. Resilience means to remain calm during crisis and to come out from those adversities without long-term negative consequences. Resilience rests upon the demonstration of family unity. Family always respond positively. Resilience is thought to be positive adaptation after a stressful or adverse situation. When a person is bombarded by daily stress, it disrupts his internal and external sense of balance, presenting challenges as well as opportunities. This is very important. Whenever we are under stress, there is always an opportunity. So it's, instead of being depressed or dejected, we should explore that opportunity. And it is also uh, to note that uh, Resilience doesn't mean only to come out from the stress, but also to come out from that adversity with competent uh, functioning. Resilience allows us to become uh, more resourceful. Also, a great epic Ramayana is the best example of it. When Sita was kidnapped, Ram did not give up. He made a large Sena known as Vanar Sena. And then he won over Sri Lanka. Not only Ram, but Sita Ji also, she suffered a lot for 13 years in the forest and then 13 months in Sri Lanka. Every day, Ravan used to frighten her in different way. And when after 14 years, she was uh, taken back and then she was again asked to go through a very, very tough ordeal. But she did not give up. She, she adjusted everything. And after a short interval, she was sent to the forest without any reason, only on the words of a washer man. And when after a very long time, when Ram was ready to accept her, again she was asked to go through the test. By that time, by so many suffering, she had become so strong that she declined. And she preferred to go into the lap of the motherland than to following Ram in the same way. This is one example, not of resilience of Sita and Ram. But everybody cannot handle the uh, pressure in the same way. Everybody is different. Even King Dashrath, who was stick to his words, and he granted two, be two boons to Kakei. Why? Because he, he had the pressure of the spoiling of the reputation of his family. Like, Ragukul Reed Sada Chaliyai Pran Jai Parvachanna Jai. He has to stick. And he could not handle it and he could not uh, tolerate the separation of his son and dies. This, this is the one example of our epic. There are numerous examples and there are a number of number of types of pressures. One pressure is the physical disability. That's a great pressure. When a, a boy or girl is born with some disability in the family or some mishap uh, occurs, then many of the relations and neighbors come and they uh, show sympathy and quiet treatment. But that enhances their depression. The, the very example of uh, everybody must be known the name who does in a very famous Hindi poet and Milton, a very uh, famous English poet. Both were blind, but their blindness did not hamper their creativity and it does the Then Helen he was blind as well as deaf 
I uh, she became them are uh, blind and deaf when she was only nineteen months old. You can just imagine that the girl who has never heard a word, how she could learn to speak. She was a very fast learner. I have read about her. I saw the movie Black Picture Eyes on her, and then I thought many times over her, but I uh, still did not understand how she could speak, how she learned to speak. This is resilience, and she graduated herself. Then many of the universities conferred doctorate degree on her. Then she visited a number of the countries and delivered lecture and inspired many of the people. This this is the I think the best example of resilience that people may show. Another uh, name comes to my mind that is Murray. He was a football player from New Zealand, and once. During practice session, he his shoulder was badly injured. He fainted. When he regained his consciousness, he was smiling. At least I am alive. And when uh, and the doctor said that no, he cannot now play football anymore. He did not bother about it. He became an athlete, and he started running, won many gold uh, medals, and then his last dream was to win in Olympiad. But in the first attempt, he could not succeed. He did not give up again. He tried to find out his mistakes, his weaknesses, and he overcame it. And in the second attempt, he was much ahead uh, to the second runner. The second runner was much behind him. But he was so tired that it was difficult for him to touch the line. He was struggling against himself. And now when he reached the line, he uh, found the target, he again fell down and fainted. When he regained his consciousness, again the same smile was in his face, and he thought that oh, I have become only a running machine. There are so many things in the life to do. So he started coaching the crippled persons, and under his guidance, a girl without both the legs won the gold medal in swimming. This, this, these are the things that we can say that this resilience work when. We are going under the hard times. Hard, resilient doesn't mean only to come out from your own weaknesses, from your own hard times, but to inspire others also. Mary Com, everybody is familiar with the name of Mary Com. She was born in a very poor family in a village, though her father was a wrestler. But he never encouraged her daughter to become a boxer because it was it was considered as a game for the males only. So naturally, she did not get the support. She did not get any uh, proper uh, tuition. So what she did, she indulged herself in the street fighting. And many of the neighbors and relations started complaining against her, but th this could not take away her passion. And he, she continued with it with her own practice and won medals and the name earned a name in the whole world. After her marriage, she got twins. And then it was considered that this is the end of her career. But the way she came back, that was that surprised the whole world. And this this happens at uh, many times when hard times come, you learn. Then uh, there are so fortunately there are so many uh, examples in the world that we can give about the resilience. Arunima Sinha. She, uh, when she was uh, boarded, she boarded a train and somebody tried to snatch her gold chain and the luggage. When she resisted, he pushed her, uh, pushed her down from the moving train. She was badly injured. And finally, the doctors had to amputate her one leg. She did not give up. Just see her resilience that she met with uh, Bichendri Pal. And under her guidance, Bichendri Paul was the first Indian woman to climb the Mount, Mount Everest. And this, uh, this lady became the first amputate lady to climb the Mount Everest. Th this, these are the things that we can say that this type of the resilience we need, that when you, uh, whatever the circumstances, whatever the pressures, whatever the hardships come, whatever the hard times you go under, but you never give up. Then Malala Yousafzai, she, she, her passion was to get education and she opened a small school, but Taliban overcame, overtook that school. And she was threatened that no, 
education was not allowed for the girls. Not, not any type of the platform for dancing. But she said on Pakistani TV that how, how Taliban dare to take away my basic right of education. She was so bold. And, but unfortunately, when she was traveling by a bus, uh, Taliban shot her. Immediately, she was airlifted to uh, Peshawar, then to England. And the, the way she came back and she survived, that was astonishing. And her incredible uh, recovery poured many of the app appreciation from all over the world. And she is the youngest lady who got Nobel Peace Prize at the age of only 17. In the same way, Lakshmi Agarwal, everybody must be knowing about the acid attack on her. And a movie is also made on her, Chapak. It is yet to be released. He was only 13 years old. When a boy of 32 years old, he started chasing her. When she did not respond, then he was very dejected. And one day when she was coming back from a bookshop, he caught hold her and poured the full bottle of acid on her. Her skin was melting like polythene. And she, she, she was under great, terrible pain. Nobody came forward for her support. When for, then a man came and he took her, uh, ambulance was called and uh, she was taken to the hospital. When her father was informed, she hugged her father, then the skin came out from the body and stuck on the shirt of the father. This was the condition of this Lakshmi Agrawal. And she could not continue her studies. But today, after the death of her father, after the uh, divorce from her husband, she had got a daughter also. But now she is an anchor, she is an activist, she is associated with the NGOs, and she is earning, not only earning, but is feeding the whole family. Yes. Uh, and these are the things that uh, I, I have discussed about the life, but uh, the Like uh, today, this uh, mar marriage or marital relationship also a one is stress. Sometimes the couple commit suicide. And wow, whenever this uh, issue comes in the family, there are many discussions like caste, uh, creed, standard, dowry, and then status and religion. So uh, these are the pressures of the young couples. In She, she has uh, described that Mrs. Bennett has five daughters and the third daughter elopes with Vikram. Vikram is a very wicked type of a person. But even then the family had to reconcile because there was the social pressure, pressure on the family that it will be a blot on the family that uh, her daughter has eloped. And the other daughters may get problem in getting married. So they surrender themselves and uh, fulfill the unreasonable demands of the victim. On the other hand, her second daughter, she has the resilience. She turns down the unreasonable match of Collins, who is also a distant relation and he is not worthwhile. So she turns down the proposal of Collins. E.M. Foster in um, Passage to India, he has also described the same thing. That lady... Uh, Adela quested that perhaps uh, this has molested her. So uh, she she made a complaint against him in the court. When she uh, when she comes to know that uh, perhaps she had the hallucination and this was the echoing sound of the caves, then she tries to take her case back. But her would-be husband, who is a Britisher, all the Britishers were provoking her to go against the Indian because they were very happy with the feeling that an Indian will be punished. But she got, she took the strong stand and she took the case back. Then uh, Anita Desai, Shashi Deshpande, Manju Kapoor, they were also described in their novels, many of the 
uh, characters they have resilience and they took their own decision they means uh, um, just uh, um, shashi days mandis uh, dark holds no terror in that novel a uh, sarita who is considered as a secondary sex because the more importance her mother gives to the boy so what she think that every time she is cursed and she is blamed for every wrong doing so she is think that there is no other way to win the faith of my mother so she involves herself devotes herself to the studies and she becomes a doctor this is how that if the literature is full filled with all these examples so i think that i have talked much about the resilience but how to how to enhance how to build that resilience that is also important there are some points that we can enhance our resilience one is the remain calm we when we are aware that what we are we should recognize ourselves who i am what i am when we recognize ourselves what we are we develop the confidence from the inner knowledge of knowing and confidence plays an important part in coping with stress mind and body are one everybody knows that the healthy mind lives in a healthy body if the body is suffering it is very difficult for the mind to be resilient another thing is accept what we are flexibility is the essential part of resilience when we cope up with the situation then it will be better to equip to respond when faced with a life crisis nourish yourself to build resilience requires a well nourished mind body complex when our body is suffering mind gives a signal to use your reserves so it is important to maintain the reserves build positive social relationship whenever we are under stress or the difficulty it is better to share it with some relations with some near and dear than to post it on social media that is not the solution so build a very good relationship and that will uh, enhance your um, resilience and it will be worth your time find your purpose in life keeping your purpose in intention on the uh, forefront gives you immunity to stress this we can do by learning to train our mind through practices of meditation then the last is practice your skill resilience you cannot develop in a day or in a week or in a short time but when you start practicing all these skills then one day that definitely you will have the resilience now i will conclude only with two lines that don't be like a carrot or an egg but be like a coffee beans i mean to say that if we have the with egg egg is very soft from the inner side when we put it to, into the boiling water it becomes hard so it lost its flexibility carrot is very hard when we put into the boiling water it becomes soft means weak it becomes weak but when we put coffee beans in the into the boiling water then the water also gives aroma means what i said earlier that you change the circumstances not the circumstances change you that is all thank you thank you very much ma'am for such an informative lecture focusing on the topic citing relevant examples from the literary text now i would request dr saba yunus ma'am organizing secretary of this event to please take over this session for summing up the deliberations by the eminent speakers and for question answer round over to dr saba yunus ma'am thank you dr nishi I will start with Dr. Maria. Dr. Maria told her about uh, uh, the knowledge, uh, uh, the knowledge enhancing speech, uh, in which uh, she have mentioned that during this hard time amidst COVID nineteen, uh, when most of the world population is suffering from mental trauma, we can establish some strategies for mental care and the role of poetry in relieving mental stress as well. Uh, i came to know that there's a question 
about the speech from the audience so i would like to call dr nishad to please raise the question uh, thank you sabha ma'am uh, there is a question for ma'am uh one candidate has asked whether with respect to couple counseling impacting psychological strength and people's lives what change have you seen in the type and themes of poetry that are the most sought after or are proving effective in helping people cope uh she has asked ki in this uh, what change she has uh, seen in the way of the uh, poetry uh how the uh, change is seen in the poetry and the uh, which is impacting the couple counseling and the psychological strengths of the people uh i can see dr alin is there uh, dr alin can you hear us Uh, uh i request the host to please unmute her she is muted yes very 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 impressive for the presentation i i feeling honest dr alin are you there yes i am uh, uh can you please repeat the question dr nishad ha uh, surely ma'am Uh, uh one candidate has asked with respect to couple counseling impacting psychological strength and people's lives what change have you seen in the types and themes of poetry that are the most sought after or are proving effective in helping people cope dr alin are you there yes but i can't hear uh okay i will repeat the question okay with respect to couples counseling impacting psychological strength and people's life what changes have you seen in the type and themes of poetry that are the most sought after or are proving effective in helping people cope Every situation is unique. Are you listening to me? Yes, 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 yes. Please carry on. The when the uh, client uh, enter in my office, they tell me a story, a story of her or his family, and uh, I make a genogram with four generation. and i study how is the life of the generation in this family when i am doing this this, this particular study i see the the good things and not good things that have in this family and what uh, the 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 client doesn't like in this family and i went out with this with him or her uh at each session i heard what they say what what they feel and this impacts me impact me and i have in my idea some can from some metaphors and when i make the poem i join what i heard and what i feel and what is here or her feel also and i deliver the poem to them what i what i say and what i feel after the deliver of the poem and the, i make i i ask to the, the people to hear to to to, to read to read the poem and the, what the transformation that i perceive is very interesting and uh, they used to say that it's like i read what they are feeling so i i have my 
my thanks to Dave share with me all this feeling. I Thank you. This. Well, I don't know if I answered the question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a question for Professor Betty as well. Professor Betty, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you quite clearly. Okay, okay. I'm repeating the question. Please reply. Uh, the question is, over and above the technological steps you laid out, what steps has the university taken to help the students cope with the ongoing crisis and help them focus on the learning. What have you find to be a bigger challenge? Technical, uh, technological challenges in taking learning online or getting the students to respond to it in these uncertain times? Okay, so there are two parts to that question. Yes. The or oh, there are two questions really. The first question has to do with what has the university done quite apart from the technological uh, steps. And I would say counseling. Counseling by experts, counseling by student services to help students to realize that through this crisis, they can be resilient and they can find advantages in this crisis. For example, traffic congestion has always been a complaint, especially among students. Many claim that they arrive late for lectures or lab sessions because of heavy traffic. While that may be true, we have found that proper organization in advance, recognizing that there will be traffic, then you leave your destination perhaps an hour or two earlier than usual. So counseling, I would say, has been used to help students in this crisis. Counseling about the fact that, look, there are advantages. You are now at home, you're in a lockdown situation. You can access your courses online. You can speak with your peers and with your instructors. And at the same time, you can have the best of two, uh, 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 you can have the best of several situations. You no longer have to travel. You can now do it at your own convenience. In many instances, you can do it at your own pace because accommodations are made. So in summary, I would say that counseling has been useful. With respect to the next question, the bigger challenge, getting students to respond. A number of students simply cannot believe that you can move from a face-to-face -face situation to an online situation and get benefits. So that getting them to respond has been an issue in many cases. On the other hand, there are those students who are really technologically savvy and they relish this idea of going online and meeting pairs, meeting uh, others and having that uh, online experience. I trust that I have answered. If there are any other questions, do let me know, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, now Okay, now we have a question for a uh, guest speaker, Professor Tosapon Mahmood. Professor Mahmood? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, I'm repeating the question, okay? Yes. Uh, yes. Based on your experience and observations, how is the new normal 
world different for students and teachers as compared to corporate professional workers yes because of uh, the the thailand is the one country in the southeast asia and the institution of the covid-19 but but actually everything is the same about the normal life is the becoming to the new normal this is the experience for the improve for the improve and the, about the professional work in organization and business and this is the important for the experience for the lecture for the student for the in the graduate in the master degree for the experience after that the new life for the in the future but actually the new normal has the important for the experience is this situation is this situation is around the world the humanity this uh, impact about the covid-19 but uh, the best experience in the, that time for the good life in the future thank you thank you thank so you. much for replying while driving thank you so much drive safe <laughs> <coughs> yes, Nishi. Okay. Now, I most humbly request Dr. B. R. Agrawal, ma'am, Principal and Head of the Department English and Convener of this e-conference for to please deliver the valedictory speech to wind up this session. Thank you, Nishi. A very good evening, everyone, once again. With due regards to all learned speakers, distinguished guests, esteemed principals, faculty members from different colleges of the universities, and all the enthusiastic participants connected via YouTube or Zoom and their students, I am pleased to deliver a valedictory address at the end of the academic session. In a way, I am here to acknowledge the great knowledge showered mercifully upon us by our enlightened speakers. Yes, today the humanity at large is standing at crossroads like Arjuna, uncertain, depressed, and undecided due to the unpredictable and unexplained circumstances generated by the unprecedented lockdown. And unfortunately, we have not been able to check the virus, multiplying and spreading at an unimaginable speed across the globe. The continuous lockdowns have adversely affected rather shattered the world economy, causing widespread loss of jobs, resulting in great frustration and stress, especially among the youth of the day. The sense of insecurity about their future is pushing them to the verge of suicide. Therefore, in this scenario, it becomes imperative for us, the intelligentsia, to explore and assess the global issues like social pressures and mental resilience in life and literature. Mental resilience is a quality born of suffering, disasters, and pandemics, which refers to the positive adaptation to adversity. It means shaking off our negativity and tapping the great powerhouse of energy, immense human potential, which resides in our soul. The socio-economic and psychological pressures exercised by the COVID-19 globally have taught us to draw upon the remarkable power of strength and cooperation that we also fortunately possess as human beings. In this webinar, our learned speakers have wonderfully analyzed the socio-economic and psychological consequences of the global pandemics, as well as the role of literature in creating awareness and motivating us to accept and adapt to the changing circumstances. Different writers in different ages, in different countries, have responded to such pandemics in their respective ways. And literature in responding to the epidemics celebrates the enduring range of human responses, the great mental resilience that people have exhibited against the death, disease and death. My organizing secretary, Dr. Sabayinis, has analyzed the wide liberation of our international speakers who have broadly highlighted the global ramifications of this pandemic in the entire beautifully surmised how the history of our nation, mythology, scripture, literature, and even social media 
our text from Sushil Deshpande, from the life of the athletes, great athlete survivors, and other characters in the movies, which who have exhibited indomitable and dauntless spirits in the face of pandemic situation in life. We all know that our freedom fighters stood tooth and nail against all the extremities, insults, and humiliations, and were ready to suffer but not surrender. And heroes in Ramayana and Mahabharata, and uh, Lord, Lord Krishna, Lord Rama, Goddess Sita, Prince Arjun, all have suffered and miseries and misfortunes in their lives. Great fortitude and determination all emerge stronger in soul and stiffer in decision after their suffering and troubles. Literary texts have mapped suffering and affliction since time immemorial. Sophocles, Oedipus, Daniel Defoe's Journal of the Play, Mary Shelley's The Last Man, and Albert Camus the play are studies in plagues and epidemics and underline the exemplary courage and mental resilience of human spirit. Italian, Italian novelist Frank Frank's Wuhan Jairi, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dolloway, Ahmed Ali's Twilight in Delhi, and a number of eco disaster fictional works from Margaret Atwood to Stephen King. Jim Grace and Comic McCarthy have dealt with pandemics in their own ways. Writers over centuries have repeatedly explored it in prose and verse, underlining not just the traumatic impacts, but also highlighted the resilience and positivity of human mind in fighting bravely against it. Our learned speaker. Professor Arlene, she has beautifully uh, presented the poem and the poem she has written speaks directly to the hope in all our hearts. It was a beautiful expression of the experience, the humanity sharing together and looks to a brighter, safer and loving future. It also reminds us of the poetry in reflecting the human condition. Thank you, Dr. Mani. Then uh, Professor McDonald's description of how she and her, uh, she and her university have been ensuring uninterrupted learning in the face of such inspiring. We hope to be able to learn from their best practices and emulate them for our institutions. Even Dr. Professor, on the need for new normal in the post COVID world, he laid out specific steps to help us adjust to these new challenges and they will certainly go a long way in helping students, teachers, companies and society overall maximize their achievements while successfully dealing with this pandemic. So I acknowledge the great speeches delivered by all our speakers and would like to add that literature is full of the examples of this society the mental resilience expressed by different characters, especially poetry. William Shakespeare, the Elizabethan poet and dramatist gave a universal strain of sweet are the uses of adversity in As You Like It. And he asked the foresters to convert challenges into opportunities. Phoebe Shelley in the Romantic Age sang the song of If Winter Comes, Can it Still Be Far Behind? And he here by winter, the poet means the days of disappointment, distress, which are very soon followed by sunshine and spring. Robert Browning, the Victorian poet in Rabi Ben Ezra and other poems, harp on the positive and optimistic view of life. Grow old with me and the best is yet to be done. And he asks us to welcome each river. John Milton, a great literary genius and a writer of the immortal epic Paradise Lost had lost his eyesight at an early age. He was depressed and disappointed for a time being as to how he could, would compose that immortal poem which the world would not let die. But very soon, he says, patience soon to prevent that murmur replies and proclaims they also serve to stand and wait. But here, patience symbolizes the inner capacity to hear, to, to bear affliction 
suffering and stress in hindi literature the great poet sudas also wrote immortal verses and devotional poetry though he was blind his mental and spiritual strength was stronger than his physical disability tennyson's ulysses also inspires us to seek to strive and strike so resilience is a main virtue as spoken by all our learned speakers which is most needed in the present times of covid 19 literature of past and present come reveals that confidence positive attitude hope for betterment can always inspire us to come out of the most critical situations in life charles dickens the uh, the victorian novelist himself a victim of abject poverty and hardship in life has imbibed his characters oliver twist david copperfield pitt and others with extraordinary courage confidence and a strong will power to fight against dark and pathetic situations in their life and convert challenges into opportunity similarly so many other writers refer to they have all given the same message dr indu goel she has referred to great athletes and other uh, uh, examples from the literature she has given the great works of british american african and indian poets essays novels from sophocles to virginia woolf and emily a great role in highlighting the stories of corona warriors warriors like girl who cycled for 1200 kilometers back home time who courageously travel for two thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you ma'am for your inspiring and enlightening words of wisdom
In the last wrapping up session after a successful completion, I would request Dr. Preeti Devedi, head of the department sociology, to propose vote of thanks to all. Over to Dr. Preeti Devedi. Thank you, Nishi. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Nishi. Good, uh, good evening, all of you. I, Preeti Devedi, HOD, Department of Sociology. On the behalf of Department of English, Department of Sociology, and entire Mahila Mahavidyale family, I'm privileged to present vote of thanks in this international webinar. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks from the core of my heart to chief guest of this webinar, Professor Neelma Gupta Ma'am, Honorable Vice Chancellor, CSJ University Kanpur, for accepting our invitation. Ma'am, you are a constant motivational drive in all our academic pursuits. I would like to pay my deep sense of gratitude towards the chief patron of this webinar, Dr. Nagen Saru, the general secretary of the Dayanand Siksha Sansthan, engineer Gorvin Saru, secretary board of management and the patron of this webinar. We MMEMs are indebted to your leadership and support throughout. You have always been inspiring and giving us in the various academic and non-academic activities. I would also like to express my thanks to Mrs. Ananta Sarup, respected member, board of management, for her gracious, gracious presence and inspiring address. We MMUs are thankful to you for accepting our invitation to address in this international webinar as a special guest. My heartful and sincere thanks to Professor Maria Aleni Di Almeida, keynote speaker of this session. Ma'am, your valuable deliberation focused on the issues like social issues and life, its relevant psychosocial consequences, and impact of COVID-19 in various strata of modern society. I am th thankful to Professor Betty McDonald, a special speaker of this webinar. We are highly benefited with your scholarly deliberations which deal with unusual circumstances caused by COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to say my sincere thanks to esteemed speaker, Professor Tasapan Mahmood. Sir, you have directed our attention on the ways to short out the possible solutions and substantial steps to overcome this global pandemic. Also, my sincere thanks to Dr. Indu Boyal, who unfolded the valuable suggestions of literary sources in responding to epidemic which portray the optimistic perspective in the time of crisis. I express my thanks to all the participants. Hope all of you have gained a lot from today's discourse. I pay my regard and thanks to our energetic and dynamic principal, Dr. B. R. Agrawal, ma'am. Without your constant motivation and guidance, this webinar would not have been possible. I would also like to present my sincere thanks to my colleague, and organizing secretary of this international webinar, Dr. Saba Yunus, who really did a hard work for the success of this international webinar. Organizing committee, coordination committee at FlyLearn also did a special mention for their valuable support. Last but not the least, I pay my sincere thanks to everyone who have contributed to make this webinar a grand, a grand success. Thank you all. Now, I request all of you to please stand for National Anthem.
Thank you. Thank you. Huh. Yes. Thank you.